Recently in Michael Jordan's Last Dance docuseries, there has been a lot of talk about Horace Grant and the incidents that happened between himself and Michael Jordan, especially the airplane incident where he told the flight attendant not to feed Horace Grant his meal because he had a terrible game. Now, this video isn't about their issues, but many people are wondering just how good Horace Grant was on Michael Jordan's bowls and how well did he contribute to the first three-peat in the early 90s. His numbers are actually surprising. This is the story of Horace Grant's career on the Chicago Bulls and in the NBA. <laughs> Horace Grant played for Clemson University and was drafted with the 10th overall pick by the Chicago Bulls in 1987. Ah yes, the year that Robocop came out. Also drafted that year was Scottie Pippen with the number 5 pick. Coming into the league, Horace was a 6'10 athletic big man who was physically strong in the post. Upon arriving in Chicago with Jordan already on the team for 3 years and leading the NBA in scoring, Horace would make a drastic overall to his game where in college he averaged 21-10 and 10 his senior year to now adapting to his teammates and role. This would humble Grant as he no longer was the go-to guy and would adjust to becoming a rebounder, defender and a garbage man who would eventually be able to adapt and do it all on the court. Already Horace and Pippen would change the culture of the Bulls. In their second year with the team, they would see winning records, and by the third season, both Horace and Pippen would be the second and third scoring option on the team. The turning point for the Bulls team is when they hired the Zen master Phil Jackson. Phil is excellent at getting the best out of his players' strengths, and it would be no different with Horace. With Horace in the starting lineup, the Bulls had the best trio in the game with Pippen and Jordan in the early 90s. A few years into his career with the Chicago Bulls, Horace would be declared legally blind. Horace Grant would quote, It's so funny that I passed a physical for the Bulls, hearing and eyesight. Phil Jackson always gave us books to read, so one night after the game on the bus, I'm reading a book and I had the book like three inches away from my face. And Johnny Batch, who was one of our defensive assistants, came up and said, you need to get your eyes checked again. The next day I go in, I'm legally blind. Legally blind. So that week, the goggles were born. The interviewer asked, that must have felt really great the first time you stepped on the basketball court and said, hey, this is what an NBA game really looks like. Horace Grant would quote, it was eye-opening, no pun intended. My good friend, Tyrone Hill, I'm like, this is what Tyrone really looked like? Not the most handsome guy in the world. Grant would have his best numbers during the Bulls' three-peat run, averaging 13.5 points and 9 rebounds a game. Horace added a defensive presence in which he was agile and quick on his feet. In 1993 and 1994, with the Bulls, he would make the All-NBA defensive second team. He started to develop a mid-range jumper and can post up whenever needed. With Jordan retiring after the 1993 season, Grant became the second scoring option and helped the team to a 55-27 and record. Grant would make his only All-Star appearance that year and average a career-best 15-11. and Although they would be dethroned in the playoffs by the Knicks, Grant tried to sign with the Bulls, but they couldn't reach an agreement. Horace's career stats with the Bulls, he would shoot 54% from the field, averaging 12.5 points a game, 8.5 rebounds, and 1 block a game. 3.5 of those total rebounds would be offensive, which is impressive. While his stats in the playoffs would also increase a couple of points in rebounds, I think it's safe to say that anyone playing on Jordan's team is going to be underrated and overshadowed by what Jordan accomplished with the Bulls, as his individual stats are dominant. After seven years with the team that drafted him, while unable to get the contract he felt he deserved with the team, Horace Grant would sign with the Orlando Magic. The young squad included Shaq, Penny Hardaway, and Dennis Scott. He had a leadership experience and was a mentor for the young players on that team. Orlando looked like the next big thing. During the 1994 and 95 season, Horace would face his former team, Chicago, in the second round of the playoffs with a recently added back from retirement and out of shape Michael Jordan. The Magic would go on to win four games to two in the series and advance to the NBA Finals against the Houston Rockets. From there, Orlando would suffer a sweep against the Rockets, but all was not lost as the young core of guys would benefit from the playoff experience. The following year, the Magic would play second in the Eastern Conference and once again face the now 72 and 10 Chicago Bulls in the Eastern Conference Finals this time. It was a clean sweep as Orlando had no answer for the Bulls, even only scoring 67 points total in Game 3. The Bulls would go on to win the title that year. Horace was very consistent in the playoffs, averaging double figures in points and rebounds, but obviously was left with a distaste in his mouth from losing to his former team who wouldn't sign him. Must have felt like a bad breakup with an ex-girlfriend. He would play a total of three years with the Magic and then be traded along with two second round draft picks in 1999 to the Seattle Supersonics for Billy Owens, Dale Ellis, Don McLean, and the rights to Corey Maggette. He would only spend one season with Seattle before being traded again in a four-team trade that involved too many players to mention that would land him in LA with his old coach Phil Jackson. And what do you know, at the age of 35, he would win another championship with the Lakers in a starting role alongside Shaq and Kobe. Horace still managed to average 8.5 points and 7 rebounds, not only with Kobe and Shaq on the team, but the lowest the NBA has ever seen in points per team in NBA history across the entire league.
Horst would then play ping pong and sign back with Orlando the following year for two years, then sign back with the Lakers his final year in the league. Horst played 17 seasons in the NBA and would finish with four rings, an all-star appearance, and four defensive team nominations. He averaged 11 points and 8 rebounds a game for his career, which was remarkable that he could average double figures playing with the likes of Jordan, Kobe, Carl Malone and Shaq. You have to be a pretty good offensive rebounder to do so, in which Grant averaged three offensive rebounds a game for his career and his 15th all-time in offensive rebounds in NBA history. I really believe on every championship team, you need your two main scorers and that third player on your team that would do anything necessary to win. Play any role that the team needs you to. Horace was that guy. It is no surprise that he was able to adapt to any team he played on and average a double-double.